Hello, in this video I'm going to show you the power of custom color profiles in Adobe Lightroom and how to use them to finally fix the annoying issue with the color shifts if you use a light pollution filter in your astrophotography, for instance this CLS filter from Astronomic. And we are going to do this with the help of this professional camera calibration tool called the Color Checker. But if you don't have one, don't worry, you can still benefit from this video. So let's get started, shall we? So if you have seen my previous video about the Astronomic CLS filter, the initial video when I did the unboxing, you probably remember when I showed you how this image looks with the filter installed in broad daylight on the daylight white balance. It has a massive, massive blue cast to the colors. And at first I thought that hmm, maybe it's just a white balance issue, I can just pump up the warmth in post-production and that would fix the issue, but it turns out that the problem is more profound than that. So I reached out to Astronomic and I asked them whether this is an expected behavior and what can I do to fix this color cast? And they have responded that I should take a picture of a white sheet of paper illuminated by sunlight and use that to create custom white balance in my camera. So I did that, but in a little bit of a different way and I took it a step further and why I needed this step you will see in just a second. So I thought to myself that these color checkers are used to calibrate cameras in order to get the same color representation of your images regardless of what camera do you use because different cameras have different sensors and they might interpret the color data from the sensor a little bit differently. So if you of this color checker, we can make sure that the colors that appear in our images are the same ones that are standardized. So I thought to myself, hmm, maybe we can treat the camera sensor with the filter installed as sort of a new type of sensor that needs to be calibrated. So I have set my camera to daylight white balance and I have illuminated this color checker by two aperture lights set to 5200 Kelvin, which matches the daylight setting on my EOS R. And I have taken two raw images, one without the filter for future reference and one with the filter installed. And as you can see back in Lightroom, the image with the filter installed is very much blue. And what can we do now? We can take the eyedropper on the white balance here and we can pick a neutral gray target which is this patch right here and we get a pretty good exposure the blue cast is definitely gone we have a little bit of a reddish cast on the image now but it looks definitely a thousand times better than it looked before right so if you read the white balance values that we got we can see that we have 29,000 kelvin and plus 100 on the tin that looks pretty extreme but hey if it worked maybe it will work for the images of the night sky as well right so Let's take a look at the example of these two images of the night sky that I have taken on my balcony recently. And I was aiming for the Milky Way, but turned out that this hill was actually obstructing most of the Milky Way. But hey, you know, I was trying to be the responsible guy and don't go outside unless I necessarily had to, so I stayed home. I tried to do some astrophotography for my balcony and here's what I got. Not very exciting, but it will work for the purpose of this tutorial. So as you can see on the image taken without the filter, we can see the familiar yellow colors and the image is very bright, but not overexposed if you look at the history. It was taken with the daylight white balance and so was this other picture that was taken with the filter installed and it is very much blue. So if we input the white balance settings that we got from the color checker image, which is 29,000 Kelvin and plus 100 tint, we can see that the image got less blue but not even close to the image that was taken without the filter. It is still very much blue, so I can try to push it even further towards the warmth on this image with the filter. But as you can see, I hit the hard limit of 50,000 Kelvin in Lightroom. And there seemed to be no way to go beyond 50,000 Kelvin in Lightroom, so we basically cannot warm up this image anymore. That's a bummer. And if you ask yourself, why don't I just like my images of the night sky blue like most of the photographers around the internet seem to? Well, you can check out this video of mine where I explain how to process the images of the night sky in order to get the best color accuracy and the best color representation of how the night sky actually looks. And by the way, this is not a question of personal taste. What I want to answer here is whether the filter actually limits you in your creativity, whether you are stuck with blue images of the night sky or you can process them any way you want. So let's continue. So now to the rescue come custom color profiles and this color checker is manufactured by the company named X-Rite and X-Rite has a proprietary software that you can download, you can take a photo, a raw photo of the color checker, you can drop it into the software and it will automatically create a profile for you. That is pretty awesome but we actually need a little bit more control in this situation so instead we are going to use the Adobe DNG Profile Editor. It is available to download from the official Adobe website. I will put the links to, to this program and basically everything I'm talking about down below in the description so you can check it out for yourself. And right here, if we open up this program, we can load up our DNG image of the color checker with the filter installed in the camera. 
it expects a file with a DNG extension and you can actually use another Adobe tool which is the DNG converter and you can convert your CR2 or CR3 files from Canon cameras or NEF from Nikons or whatnot and convert them into the common format which is DNG and then load it up to the software. So after we load it up we can see our image of the color checker with this huge blue cast and right now we can go to the fifth tab on this program which is called chart and now we can read the instructions that we should align those four circles with the four corners of the color checker to the appropriate color patches and once I do that I can click on the create color tables and bam, the image looks pretty good already and it looks very similar to what we got back in Lightroom, right? But now you can see that the software has produced a lot of information here on the left, but we don't need to dive in into that. This is all handled by the software. But what is important is that right here on the right side, on the title of this window, we can read the file name, we can read the name of my camera, which is Canon EOS R, and we can read the white balance setting, which is 25,000 slash 103. And this corresponds to the 25,000 Kelvin temperature and plus 103 tint, which is very similar to what we got in Lightroom, right? But now, now the magic happens because now we can go to the color matrices tab and right down below, we can see a white balance calibration section. And now if I drag these sliders, you can see that the image doesn't get any different, but what changes is the white balance reading on the title in this window. And I can actually drag those sliders in a way that my white balance reading reads now 5250 Kelvin and minus 31 tint, which is a very standard white balance setting for a daylight situation, right? Right now we can either save this as a recipe and recipe is basically like a project file in this software so you can load it up at a later point and tweak it around if you need but more importantly you can actually export a color profile and the color profile can be later used in Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw. So we can give it a custom name and we can save it on our local disk and now we can actually restart Lightroom so that Lightroom will see this profile and now let's go back to this image of the night sky that was taken with the filter. Let's reset it by hitting this button and now we can click here to load up the profile selection and we can click on our profile. As we can see the image got even bluer but don't worry because if I close out this you can see what happened to the sliders of the white balance. They got shifted and now I can pick daylight here and if I pick daylight we can see that the image looks pretty much similar to what we had before when we applied the 29,000 Kelvin and plus 100 tint. But now the difference is that we have actually a lot of room to play with in order to further warm up this image. And as you can see, if I warm up the image even more and drag the tint slider more towards the left, I get a pretty good result and the colors now look very much similar to the exposure of the image without the filter. And that's our final solution. And the best part is that the color profile is actually a standard file that just sits around on your local disk and I can share it with someone. So you can actually go to the description of this video and download the color profile that I have just created and you can use it for yourself. So you don't need to go through the entire process with the color checker. And if you have an EOS R, it should work perfectly for you. But if you have a different camera, you can still try to use this profile and probably you'll get a good result as well. So let me know down below in the comments what do you think about this solution? I'm pretty excited for this, but that's it for now for this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up down below. Also, consider subscribing to the channel because there will definitely be more videos like this. And I usually make photography tutorials, filmmaking tutorials, basically everything that revolves around things you can do with your camera. And once the situation with the virus goes down, I definitely try to go into the field and take some dope photos of the night sky. I will probably do some vlogs of those trips and editing tutorials so definitely consider subscribing if you don't want to miss out on those videos but that's it for now see you next time and bye bye